have to tell you, sometimes I receive the best comments from from some of you, and all, all of your comments are welcome and great. I'm always impressed with how much knowledge is out there. One of the requests I had um, over time was for uh, something on pump action rifles, and I probably neglected them. I think I made a video on the 760 Remington, if I'm not wrong, but that probably goes back a couple of years. And um, all of you who commented, what's wrong with pump action rifles? It's just that they are limited in number. That has nothing to do with their excellence. I think they're fantastic. There should be more of them. But people like bolt actions and then these black rifles show up and then all these economy rifles. So I got distracted. But um, for sure, we're going to look at the Remington uh, 121. Uh, you'll notice this one has no sights because um, the prior owner just shot aerial targets with it, which sounds in difficult. I was going to say impossible, but it's not. And we'll look at the Browning trombone as well, which is right here, um, which is a fantastic rifle, as most of you know. Uh, but today, I'll just make a quick video because I had specific requests um, to discuss what rifle I'd recommend that has a fairly high capacity and a lot of horsepower within 300 yards. Um, I, when I was reading these requests, there was more than one. Uh, some in Alaska, some in Northern Canada, some in, uh, in other places. And, you know, I don't know all things at all times, so I, I thought, well, that's an interesting question. Within 300 yards, so we don't need to carry around 300 win mags and other long-range cartridges because the, the fellows were clear. I presume this is mostly moose and elk and I guess maybe red deer and uh, within 300 yards or 300 meters depending where you are. So I started looking at things and I was planning that pump action video and I, one of my favorite pump, shack, pump actions is this Remington 760, 7600, sorry, Woodmaster. Um, I like these because they're just so, they're just so slick. You, 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 there's no effort to work these. And when I did that Krieghoff Semprio video a while ago, I was thinking how excellent this 7600 is. The Semprio costs five or six thousand, and the 70, 7600 or 760 is a fraction of that price. Anyway, getting to the point, this is in 35 Whalen, and answering your questions directly, uh, in 35 Whalen, the firepower of this rifle, which does not look like an African rifle at all, but when you take a peek at the ballistics as I did, and I wrote them down just so I don't get them mixed up. So if we were looking at a 375 Holland and Holland, it would be launching a 250 grain bullet at 2,800 feet per second, and the Holland and Holland would generate about 4,300 or 4,400 foot-pounds of energy. Now the Holland and Holland can shoot bigger bullets. It can go higher than 250, but I just use 250 because that's the weight that the Whalen shoots and is available in. And I even use the 30 out 6, but I couldn't use 250, so I used 180. Anyway, listen to this. This humble looking rifle. I mean, it doesn't have a quarter rib. It doesn't weigh nine pounds and it's a pump action and um, it costs like a grand or whatever. Um, only because of scarcity, they should make them again. The, the Wayland fires a 250 grain bullet at 2,550 feet per second for 3,625 foot pounds of energy. So it's just about 250 feet per second slower than this 375 Holland and Holland. But you have the repeat shots, the low cost. And I went to the trouble of making a table, which was too confusing to explain on air, but within 300 yards, whether you're shooting a bolt action rifle, you can get these, I believe in the Remington 700 if you're lucky, maybe the classic, maybe another model. There are a lot of custom rifles in this caliber, but within 300 yards, the 35 Wayland delivers more foot-pounds of energy and you can get similar or even more energy out of smaller bullets. But it's important to remember 
it's kind of the case I'm building for you fellows up north. The frontal area of the 35 Whalen is, in European terms, 9 millimeters. The 9.3 by 62, so you can see 9.3 is just 0.3 millimeters more. That cartridge has been used for lion and all kinds of uh, colonial purposes for like a century or something like that. But you'll only find the 9.3 by 62 dressed up in these heavy duty rifles. There are some lighter ones, but they have tremendous recoil. Maybe this one does too. I don't know when I fired, I, I hardly notice the recoil. As you can see, I tossed on one of those aperture sights just because you, I, I just can't duplicate the performance of these iron sights with scopes. Uh, maybe it's just me or something, but they shoot quicker. And maybe it's because I have tremor in my hands, as I've mentioned before, but I don't notice the tremor with iron sights and hit everything as you would. Um, so anyway, getting back to that compelling case, which actually the numbers conveyed to me more than a prior conclusion or pre-conclusion. Um, the 35 Wayland delivers all that power. It has the frontal area. So the, the bore diameter of this bullet before expansion exceeds the diameter of some of these other calibers after expansion. So that naturally you can figure that out. It makes a bigger hole. The 375 makes a still bigger hole, but do you want to be hauling around a 375 H&H and you know how much powder that cartridge burns? I guess the closest would be the 9.3 by 62, but that's again a really different rifle. And unless you could get one in somehow rechamber, but why bother? The 35 Whalen is great. Um, but I should mention the 30 out 6 just because that's sort of the baseline. So that fires a 180 grain bullet at 2700 feet per second for 2913 feet per second. So I mean rounding things off, the 30 out 6 fires a 180 grain bullet at about the same speed as the Whalen does the 250 grain bullet less a couple of hundred feet per second. And I know you ballistics gurus will be correct in questioning my uh, ballistics numbers, but I tend to round things off just because of practicality. So that is my answer. If I had to head to the north, and I know these are reliable. Some people say they're not. Uh, you know, I receive a lot of mail and people say, well, they're terrible or they're wonderful. Actually, the 760, I hardly receive any negative comments on or the 7600. I think this one still has the multiple locking lugs. No, this one is, this is the, the two locking lugs. The earlier models had multiple locking lugs. But the long and short of it is, I'm impressed with the numbers that this 35 can crank out. I understand now why there are guys that just own a 35 Whalen and nothing else. Some of you have written me that they can be loaded with any 9mm bullet, which must be true. That means you have access to all the bullets that work in the 9mm cartridges, handgun and otherwise, like 357 Magnum is also 9mm. These numbers don't always make sense, but you can check your reloading manuals. Anyhow, um, obviously an impressive firearm, very practical, and pound for pound and dollar for dollar, um, probably the most horsepower that you can get in a rifle. I hope that makes sense. I'll be interested in your comments. Uh, this one shoots to a minute of angle. I think most of them do. The bigger bullets tend to shoot like that. And again, I'm not talking magnums and 500 yards. That's a different game. I still advocate that 300 yards and less is sporting ranges. The rest is a real ballistic experiment, which I admire, but I, I just hunt within 300 yards if I can and 200 is better and 100 is still better if you follow me. So um, that's about it. It was interesting and actually exciting to research all this. Thanks for that question. Some of them were very old but it takes me time and um, join me on Patreon and if you can follow on Instagram even better 
and always remember to push the subscribe button and slowly we're making some progress on this channel thanks to you and that's about it for today we'll see you on the next video where we'll talk about pump action 22s take care and we'll see you bye